Okay, good morning. Wait lang ha. Let me open my Facebook Live also. Yan. Good morning, everybody. So yeah, let's wait. Uh, let's wait a couple more minutes to for for some people to join. But good morning, welcome for uh, welcome this uh, Monday morning. Can I see the comments? Wait la. Can I see the comments? Hey. Um, JV, paano ko makikita yung comments dun sa live? Can you help lang quickly? Ayun, kita ko na yung comments. Yan, okay. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? All right, thank you for kay Gina Kiamba watching from Balakat City. Thank you for joining. Okay, I assume karamihan ng mga watchers natin will be teachers. Yes? Isang ano naman dyan, comments naman sa... So on where which school you're representing anong subject at tinuturuan para we can ano para we can give a shout out naman sa Facebook live All right Okay I guess we can start no so good morning uh, welcome sa uh, this this morning seminar which is conducting online classes 101 what to know and how to do it basically I'm just going to teach you some of the basics uh, on what you need to know uh, to conduct your online classes moving forward, okay? So just a short background of myself, that's me. I'm Randy Panganiban and I have uh, 16 plus years experience with uh, various industries already, uh, namely IT management, onboarding and training, customer service and people management. So I am currently, I am currently the uh, an onboard specialist with ConnectWise. I'm also part of, uh, I'm also a training consultant with uh, Leading with Success. Uh, that's a training company uh, here in Manila. I'm also a part-time financial advisor with Film Life. I also co-own a Pyro Modern Cuisine Restaurant and Amplify Inc. Uh, those are two small businesses that Okay. I was also a former executive chef of Villa Margarita Catering Services. I also worked in Singapore as an incident manager with uh, HP and also in the Philippines with HP. So that's a short background of myself. Okay, yes, good morning. Yeah, and kinder teacher, see Nikon Eyes. Very good, very good. Okay, so yeah, let's continue. All right. All right, 
right now we have a new normal for our lives, which means there's there will also be a new normal for our learning. Okay, so we'll start off this session by uh, by having a quote. Okay, so this quote comes from Doris Lessing. Okay, so. Doris Lessing is a British Zimbabwean Nobel Prize winner in liter literature. And she says, uh, you suddenly understand something you've understood all your life, but in a new way. That is what learning is. So right now, as we embark on this new world, bago na kasi because of what COVID did, we ask ourselves how we can cope and adjust to this new normal. Right? So globally, nations have been brought to their knees amidst the pandemic that we are in the middle of. But of course, in all of this, we cannot compromise the education of our students and our kids. Hence, the emergence of different platforms to enable learning to continue have popped up left and right. Okay? It's all about how we can combine these to provide the most immersive and conducive virtual learning experience for our students. So of course, there will be new concepts here for some, but uh, I think the important thing here is uh, keep an open mind, right? Keep an open mind. I, I do understand that some, some, some of you guys may be uh, technologically inferior, then you may hear about some gadgets and all, but since this is the new normal, uh, I urge you to have an open mind. All right, all right. So basically, it's just relearning how to teach, okay? relearning how to live all the same because of the unprecedented pandemic that has befallen us. All right. So right now, I assume again, a lot of the teachers and students will adjust with uh, working from home, so to speak, as the new normal, no? which means there will be some distractions at home. How will the teachers uh, be able to, to get their lessons to their students, etc. So. Uh, this session basically will help you bridge that gap, all right? As well as concerns on supervision for younger students. You medyo makukulit pa na mga grade 1 and grade 2 probably, or mga kinder. So I think uh, this session probably can help you bridge that gap, all right? All right. Okay. So I, I have a question sa inyo, no? Everybody. Uh, and if you can just uh, put it in your comments in uh, Facebook Live. So what are the difficulties or adjustments that you can see or predict or have encountered in performing online classes? All right, so leading to your question, uh, what are the difficulties or adjustments that you see, predict, or encounter in performing online classes? So uh, I... I, I'm welcoming everybody to put their answers in the comments. Babasahin natin some of them. So that uh, medyo, ano, I think some of them naman pare-parehas ang, ang mga sagot. But I'll give you guys two minutes for you guys to share your difficulties or adjustments sa, ano, sa comments natin. Okay, I'll give you two minutes, everybody. All right, again, the question, no? what are the difficulties or adjustments that you see, predict, or encounter in performing online classes? All right. Yeah, let's wait for the comments, no? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you guys more two to three minutes. I, I want you guys to share your, your difficulties. Yeah, let's check kung meron ng mga nagko-comments. Tapa, maraming nagko-comment na good morning. Yes, good morning. Ayan na, si Ms. Iyunye, the availability of internet connection to all for both teachers and students. Yan, that's one, no? Very good. That's a very good comment, madam. All right, students with poor internet connection, distractions and noise from my toddler's kids at home. That's correct. All right, focus, yan, very important yung focus. Comfort placement, television, etc. That's right. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, the internet connectivity, that's right. I will not be able to monitor or observe. All right. Unpredictable internet signals, yes. So I believe na um, most of us will 
we'll adjust on these, no? Uh, mostly the answers will be internet connectivity, uh, how to use the gadgets, how to use the new platform. So I think uh, everybody's uh, feeling that pain, so to speak, all right? So yeah, let's get more comments here. Okay, internet connectivity, many distractions at home. So, so again, from, from my end, no, I urge you guys to set up a, a, a space in your home to make sure that uh, the distractions inside your home will not impede with, uh, with what you want to do, regardless if you are a teacher or a student. So I urge the parents also to help their, the students at home to make sure that the space that they're listening to the teachers with are very conducive for learning, or at least the best that you can do, all right? So yeah, let's move on. Thank you for all your comments. I really appreciate them. All right. Ayan, may isang comment Patience. Yan, medyo, medyo may hirapan yung ibang parents because they're, they're not used to having their kids 24-7 at home. Iba yung patience nila uh, compared to the teacher. So yes, that's very good. Okay, so yeah, let's move on. Let's move on, all right? So today... Uh, I just have two objectives for today. No? These are just very basic since this is just uh, uh, online training for uh, 101, basically an introduction. Lab. So my two objectives are uh, just to introduce you to the different platforms of video conferencing and the different options of learning management systems that can cater to you and your students. Okay? And of course, I, I will not forget the parents also. The parents out there who are joining us today uh, you can learn a lot from this also okay at the same time i will share you some share with you some tips and tricks on effective teaching online excuse me all right so, yeah let's move on so the first thing that i'm going to present to you guys is uh video conferencing all right what is video conferencing? So video conferencing is a live visual connection between two or more people residing in separate locations for the purpose of communication. So I'm pretty sure most of you guys are aware of this already. Okay, I will show you in the next slide kung ano -ano specifically uh, on the video conferencing, okay? So at its most sophisticated, it provides transmission of full motion video. So you can see, makikita mo, Yung taong kausap mo, pwedeng multiple pa yan, okay? And at the same time, a high quality audio yan between multiple locations, all right? And the second one that I'm going to show you is a learning management system, all right? So a learning management system is a software-based platform that facilitates the management, delivery, and measurement of an organization's corporate e-learning program, all right? So basically, it's a system na for you to, to use to make sure that your students can access that. You can do your tests there, you can do grading. It will all depend on the learning management system that you will, that you will use, okay? So LMS is a fundamental component of effective learning strategy. So I urge you guys, again, I'm not endorsing any of these products. Hopefully, walang, di nila ako binibigyan ng pera for this. So I urge the, the, the teachers, the students, and the parents to make sure that they work with their schools to, to determine kung ano yung best solution uh, that can cater to, to the kids, to the students. No? All right? So I'm pretty sure na you, you learn a lot from today. Okay? So let's move to video conferencing. Okay? So why video conferencing ba? Oh, sorry. All right? Okay, why video conferencing? So first, it lets you connect with any device. So I assume that most of you have smartphones <clears throat> at the minimum, at the minimum, <clears throat> right? So smartphones can connect to the internet, which means uh, if you have a link to this video conferencing, um, you can connect to that. Okay. Actually, the simplest nga of the simplest of the video conferencing is FaceTime or Facebook Messenger, and I'm pretty sure everybody here has Facebook. Kasi nagpo-comment kayo sa akin ngayon, di ba? So I'm pretty sure you are familiar with that. Okay. Uh, the second one, it remains reliable wherever you are. So as as long as you have good connectivity, good internet connectivity, 
you can access this uh, video conferencing, okay? The third one uh, for video conferencing, uh, it is affordable and easy to use. So most of the, the, the packages for the video conferencing, metal package and usually na free. Of course, the free will only have the basic components of what video conferencing are. But of course, if uh, you work with your school, if you if probably you need something that's more that has more functionality or more features, of course you can probably take the option of the paid version. So again, work with your school, work with your teachers, make sure that whatever you're gonna purchase will work in the long term as well. All right. The fourth reason is uh, it is scalable and allows any, any employee or student for that matter to join. So again, uh, different video conferencing platforms, may mga limit yan, time limit, may mga limit on joinees. So again, uh, this is what I'm gonna introduce to you later on when we go to the next slides. And, that, and lastly, it makes external meetings easy and enjoyable. So basically right now, because of technology, isang click na lang, makikita mo na yung teacher mo. Makikita mo na yung buong klase mo. Isang click na lang. So, basically, um, we can still do that virtual class. Uh, of course, I understand the, na the teacher still has that personal touch. Uh, my, my, my mother is a teacher. That's why I know how it goes. Eh. Na it's, it's still different if you see your students face-to-face. -face. But unfortunately, because of our situation now, we are forced to look for other options to make sure that the students can still learn. So yes. All right. So again, let's check the comments. Baka may mga question kayo. Guys, you can ask a question anytime ha, sa mga comments natin. But I'll open the floor later on after the, the, after the training for Q&A. So just to be clear. Lang, okay. So good morning, everybody. Ayan. I was able to register. Can I still get a certificate? I will ask that later dun sa Aviva. Okay. All right, so yeah. let's move on. Yeah. So just to show you some stats. So according to Statista, this is a statistics company. These are the increase of usage of each of the various video conferencing during COVID-19. So, so this started around February, March, this, the, the stats that you see here. So if you can see there, the top two, FaceTime and Facebook Messenger, right? These two. So, bakit ito yung may pinakamataas? Because this is both connected to your, to your phone and to your social media. Okay? So, ito yung pinaka readily available. It's very easy to use. Okay? It's connected to your social media. That's why ito yung uh, pinakamataas na jump. However, the next, how many? Five? These are the ones used for business. For, uh, ito na yung ginagamit ng mga schools. And I'm pretty sure most of you have heard Zoom, Skype, Okay, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. Ito usually yung mga ginagamit natin. Okay? So beca because FaceTime and Facebook Messenger ties back to our personal and social media, it's safe to say that that won't be viable options to do online classes. Okay? Kasi we don't want to mix naman yung video conferencing natin with our social media. Baka kung ano pa makita ng teacher nyo dyan sa Facebook natin, di ba? Or vice versa, the student might see something on our Facebooks. So probably what we can use is the, the business ones, the Zooms, the Google Meets, and etc. Okay. So again, please note that these applications have different functionalities and features. Okay. So let's focus uh, the top four right now that uh, businesses and uh, businesses and different industri industries are using right now. So time check that. Right. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, so before we go to that, I think it's very important for us to, to, to list down the different equipment that we need for us to be able to do video conferencing properly. Okay, so number one, okay, number one, the displays. Of course, you need to have a laptop, a desktop monitor, or a television screen. So basically, you just need uh, a PC, okay, a PC or a laptop. Okay, uh, with that, you also need microphones and cameras, of course. So built-in microphones and webcams dun sa mga laptop nyo. Kung external naman yan sa mga PC nyo, yung mga USB microphones or webcams, that can also work. All right? 
Of course, speakers, built-in computer speaker again in your laptops or external speakers with your PCs, or kung meron kayong conferencing phone already, all right? Tapos ikaw connect yun alang yung video dun sa voice over IP na phone yun. Okay, kung meron kayong ganon. Okay. Pinaka important number four internet connection. If you don't have uh, internet connection, of course, di kayo ma connect with your other peers and other students. Okay, so marami naman ng option ngayon na uh, different brands ng Wi-Fi or Ethernet, meaning the wired siya. So just just make sure that you check kung anong signal yung strongest dyan sa just sa area nyo. Kasi there are some like in our area here in Mandaluyong. May isang, may isang service provider na mahina yung signal. So, we changed our service provider to a different one. Mas malakas na yung signal. So, make sure that you check which signal is strongest in your area. Okay? And, at, and the last one, of course, is your video conferencing software. So, the video, video conferencing tools and apps. Okay? Which I will show to you in the next slides. Sige. Let's check the comments first. Baka meron tayong question. Wala pa naman. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Meron tayo from Batangas, from Bulacan. Hashtag I love teach. Yes. Make sure you use the hashtag I love teach. Okay. Para ma and we have to thank Abiva Publishing House as well for giving us the opportunity for this training. No? So 15,000 na ang listeners natin. Wow. Grabe. Okay. Thank you all for joining move on. All right. So what is Zoom? So number one kung ginagamit yung Zoom, no? Personally, this is the video conferencing uh, platform that of my choosing. Ito yung favorite kung ginagamit because, all right. So Zoom unifies cloud video conferencing, simple online meetings and group messaging into one easy use platform. Okay. Kung makikita nyo, ito ako. Yeah, that's a corner. This is one of my meetings with uh, my Film Life family. So we used Zoom. We used Zoom to have our agency meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, ang maganda sa Zoom, again, nakikita mo lahat ng participants. Okay. And parang sila yata yung una kong nakita na you can change the background. So kung gusto mo background is nasa San Francisco ka or nasa Paris, France, you can do it. All right. Sige. So that's Zoom. Okay. So ano bang features and benefits of Zoom? All right. So video and audio quality is excellent. Okay. It delivers everything you need for video conferencing. Okay. Um, it gives you the freedom also to connect to any device that suits you, including your smartphone. Okay. So I'm pretty sure dun sa mga users ng Zoom natin, nakita nyo na tong home page nila. So meron new meeting, may join meeting, you have a schedule and you have your share screen. No? So it's very user-friendly tong Zoom. Okay? Na minsan, when somebody sends you a meeting, they will just send you a link like this. Correct? And then you will just click this and sasali na kayo dun sa... You, you'll be able to join already the, the training. Or, or sorry, the, the, the meeting in, in uh, video conferencing. Okay? And at the same time, Meron siyang live chat. So usually when we do trainings in Zoom, uh, like in FB Live, if there are any questions or comments, they can do it straight to the chat so we can read it real time. Okay? So again, perhaps the biggest uh, benefit of Zoom <clears throat> is how accessible it is. Right? Setting up Zoom is as simple as clicking on this invitation to launch the app or prompt users to install the interface. So it's very easy, all right? So again, this can be used in your smartphones, in your laptop, in your PC. Make sure that connected lang kayo sa internet, okay? Yeah. Okay, may questions pa? Wala pa naman, okay. Watching from Dominic Savio School, Calamba Laguna. Good morning po, Miss Robles. Yeah. All right, so again, let's move on. Now, did you know, because Zoom yung parang number one right now, Zoom has 300 million users daily. Mostly of uh, the people that I know in business and different industries, Zoom talaga yung ginagamit because of its ease of use and uh, yung pwedeng marami kasing pwedeng sumali, etc. Right? So Zoom has 300 million users daily. Grabe ang pag-Zoom ng Zoom. Yeah. 
ever since COVID, mas dyan talaga siya, ano, namayagpag ang Zoom, right? So let's move on sa plans and pricing. Okay, sa so Zoom, you have a free plan, okay? But the free plan, you can host meetings only for 40 minutes with up to 100 participants, okay? However, if you have one-on-one -on -one conversations lang, unlimited yung time mo with Zoom. Okay? Excuse me. All right, so that's the free plan for Zoom. So if you host meetings with more than uh, with more than two participants, you only have a time limit of 40 minutes. I'm pretty sure some of you have experienced this already. Okay? However, again, dun sa one-on-one, -on -one, writing unlimited. Now, if you use the pro plan, which costs about $15 a month per host, okay, this plan extends the group meeting duration for up to 24 hours. So I think some of the, like for example, in my Film Life family, I think they have this plan already, which means na we can have a meeting straight three hours, no problem, no cuts and everything. So, so again, uh, I urge you teachers and parents and everybody in our, uh, who's joining right now to explore the, the possibility of this. It, you can research this very easily in the internet. Okay? On what, what's going to be working for you, for your school, for your students, for the teacher. Okay? Now, ito na yung medyo malalaki na, no? The business plan. The business solution costs about $200 per month. And then, uh, ano na siya? Meron na siyang 1 gig of cloud recording, Skype integration, and API access. API access, basically, pwede mong ma-customize ng konti yung Zoom on how it can better fit your, your needs. Okay? Pwede na siyang ma, ma, the, the, yung integration niya. You can, you can customize it na based on your school's needs and requirements. And lastly, ito na yung super big, the enterprise. This, this is $1,800 already. So you'll get all of the functionality for Zoom, but I think uh, in this day and age in our schools, I don't think this is uh, a viable option for us. No? I'm sorry. Okay, so these are the four different plans and pricing for Zoom. Okay, so mostly you can still use the free plan. Okay, mostly na makakilala ko, they can make use of this. They just chop up the different times for their meetings with their students, etc. Okay, for Zoom. Because ang advantage nga ng Zoom is 100 participants siya. Marami siyang participants. Okay. Alright, so that is Zoom. Okay, so let's, let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's move on to Cisco WebEx. All right, so Cisco WebEx is a cloud-based suite of productivity tools that keeps, te keeps teams connected. With video meetings, file sharing, team messaging, the suite allows for unified communication for any business from small to medium businesses to enterprise-wide needs. So if you can see here on the right side, this is how Cisco WebEx looks like. So if anybody of you watches uh, CNN, this is their choice of video conferencing, okay? Kung nakikita nyo sa upper right corner via Cisco WebEx, yun ang, yun ang usually ginagamit ng CNN for this. Alright? So again, uh, mostly of the features and functionalities will all be the same, albeit very minor tweaks on different uh, features with the different video conferencing. Okay? All right, so did you know if you're the host in Cisco WebEx, you can determine whose video you and your participants see. So this is one of the things na pwede this a Cisco WebEx. All right. So ano siya? again, I urge you guys na if ito yung napili yung video conferencing, all of the features and explanations of, on how it's used, it's all there in, the, in their website. Naman. So, and at the same time, there's a trial period, I believe for some of the functionalities, okay? For most of these video conferencing that I will uh, discuss with you guys, right? So let's go to the features and benefits for Cisco Web, uh, WebEx, okay? Hello, good morning from Nueva Ecija, from Muntinlupa and Pangasinan. Hashtag I love teach. Thank you all for joining. We're up to 16.5 thousand viewers. Thank you for joining everybody. All right, so features and benefits style. All right, so simple but modern video, okay? It brings you a consistent experience across all your devices. So whatever 
however it looks like in your laptop or in your PC, uh, ganun din yung itsura niya in your smartphones. It's very similar. Okay? And at the same time, uh, it integrates with the tools and video, devi uh, video devices that you already use. All right? And similar, similarly to Zoom, participants can join meetings in just one click, accessing the different uh, features, the video, the audio, the polling, the chat, sharing features without needing to download a single plugin. So again, it's very easy to use, similarly to Zoom. But again, it's up to you guys to, to check kung ano talaga yung mag-work for you, for your solutions on, the, on online teaching. Okay, you can explore all of these. Right. Uy, good morning from Doha, Qatar. Thank you for joining, Ms. Naida Mongkal. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, let's move on. So let's move on to the plans and pricing for Cisco WebEx. Okay. So that's how it looks like sa ano nyo. All right. May start meeting. It integrates to the calendar. Okay. Similarly to Zoom. All right. So free share for individuals. If you... If you want to use this, it's free. Okay. But again, uh, there are certain features and functionalities that may be limited because of because it's free. Okay. The starter kit, however, is about fifteen dollars per month per host, and this is for up to fifty participants in each meeting. So if you can see this, the comparison, no, sa Zoom, pag free ka, you have one hundred participants already. Dito, paid pa lang siya, 50 participants pa lang. So again, yeah, this is where the things differ now between the different video conferencing. Okay? Now, the third one, the plus uh, plan, is about $20 per month per host. Dito pa lang papasok yung 100 participants ng Cisco WebEx. Okay? Kumpara sa Zoom na free pa lang, 100 participants, although may 40 minute na na limit, okay? And of course, the business plan for Cisco WebEx is about $30. Ito naman, 200 participants na to. All right? So you can see the minor differences now with, with uh, Cisco WebEx and Zoom already. No? So again, I urge you teachers to explore this. Uh, do your own research. Again, this is just a precursor or just an introduction for you to make sure that you have different options to research on. Okay, so yeah, let's check the chat. Baka may nagko question. Good morning from Camarines Sur by Miss Cecil Borromeo. Good morning po. All right, so yeah, okay. Let's move on. Now, ito, si Google Meet. So I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar also with Google Meet. All right. So Google Meet is a video chatting service designed primarily for business and office use, which lets colleagues chat over video and text. Okay? <clears throat> so did you know Meet has 100 million users daily? All right? So on difference naman sa Google Meet, uh, this is uh, browser-based. Pwede mo siyang ma-access sa browser, which means you don't need to download the Google Meet, especially if you have uh, a laptop. However, if you have a smartphone, you can download the Google Meet app then don't kayo gagawa ng video conferencing niya. Okay? Because uh, Google Meet basically is also parang open source siya. It's free. All right. So let's move on to the features and benefits. All right. So hosts can share their screen and digital presentation with attendees. Okay. I think that's basic naman with all of the video conferencing. Right, it's accessible on iOS and Android devices. So regardless if you have an iPhone or, or a Samsung or Android device, you can access this. Again, you can just download the app for that. Right. So invite participants straight from Google Calendar. So what's good about uh, Google Meet? It integrates to all your Google Suite uh, applications. So it integrates to your Gmail. It integrates to your Google Calendar. Okay. So that's, that's, those are some of the features of Google Meet. This is very easy to use. Uh, currently, this is the choice of my mother because this is the most user-friendly for her. Okay? Very easy lang. Uh, click here and there. Tapos mag-join na ng meeting. So, 
All right. So one thing to note for those who can't attend a meeting via the video feed here, kunyari wala silang video conferencing, hindi sila smartphone, they can still join via the phone. They can just listen in. Okay. So this can be a good option for those uh, people who don't have smartphones or who don't have laptops. So hindi, siya, hindi na siya excuse for you guys to, ay hindi ako naka-attend ng meeting or ng seminar because wala akong smartphone, I cannot see you. No. So meron siyang option that you can still join via, via phone. Okay? So that's a good feature ng, ano, ng Google Meet. Okay. Right, so yeah. Okay, let's go to the plans and pricing. So for Google Meet, the good thing about Google Meet, anyone with a Google account will be able to access Google Meet for free. Again, because it's uh, browser-based, you don't need to actually have an app for this. You can access this through your browser already. Okay, and again, it inter integrates seamlessly to your Google Calendar, to your Google Mail. All right. So you can set up your Google Meet meetings and seminars through your calendar. My option done that you can just uh, uh, have an, a Google Meet seminar for that in the invite for the calendar. Okay. Sige, marami ng questions about Zoom. We'll, we'll go back to that no? pag nagkaroon tayo ng Q&A later on. All right. All right. Okay, so again, uh, anyone with a Google account will be able to access Google Meet for free. So that's the good thing about Google Meet. However, if you want to, to get some of the different plans with the different added functionalities, Google Meet starts at about $4 a month for the basic tier, about $10 for the business, and about $25 for the enterprise. So again, uh, the different features and functionalities will add on once the plans get more expensive. Okay? They, they, they have more features and functionalities, which I urge you, teachers, parents, and uh, students alike, and school administrations, and everybody from the academy, basically, to, to do your own research as well on which works for your school, which works for your solution, which works for your uh, curriculum. All right? Okay. So let's move on to Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So Microsoft Teams is a chat-based workspace in Microsoft 365, which is formerly Office 365. So I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of what Microsoft is. So yung mga Microsoft Word natin, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, and etc. So they made their own video conferencing platform. No? And uh, the good thing about this Microsoft Teams mostly ng operating systems ng mga laptops natin is Microsoft-based, right? So Microsoft OS siya. So it's very easy to use pag ganun siya. But however, if, if you have a different laptop like a, like a MacBook, pwede mo pa rin naman siya ma-access, right? So Teams is integrated with all the Microsoft apps, including Skype and the traditional Office apps like Outlook, which is why I didn't include Skype already because naka-integrate na si Microsoft Teams sa Skype. Okay, kasi Skype is another video conferencing uh, platform, di ba? Na siguro nagtataka kayo, bakit walang Skype at walang Skype? So I, uh, the good thing about Microsoft Teams, it integrates na with Skype. Okay, and it's more business, uh, it's more of business use na uh, for this one, uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, and I'm pretty sure everybody's aware also sa Outlook. This is the email platform ng Microsoft. Okay, so again, yung Outlook mo, Outlook Calendar, it goes, uh, it integrates seamlessly to your Microsoft Teams already. All right. Also, did you know you can use your SharePoint to store and share files? So yung Microsoft SharePoint, nyo, which is your repository of your different uh, files and folders. So basically, it's like a mini cloud within your system. You can store and share files as well. So ito yung parang Google Drive ng ano, Microsoft, di ba? Ito yung parang Google Drive niya. Si SharePoint. Okay? Yeah, let's move on. So features and benefits. Ayan. So again, as I mentioned earlier, it integrates with all your Microsoft apps, including Skype and Outlook. So it can host up to 250 members. 
Okay? But again, the 250 members, this is, I think, for the paid uh, plan already. Okay? So for the free plan, which I will discuss later on, you can see up to nine participants lang simultaneously. That's the free one. Okay? Also, it offers screen sharing, call recording, as is any of the video conferencing options that we had. And it can provide transcripts of the meeting. So that's very important also. No? If you can go back to, Miss De La Cruz or Ganto. So you can go back to that. All right. Now for plans and pricing. Yes, there's a free plan. There's no commitment. Okay. Uh, the business plan is about five users a month. Uh, sorry, five dollars per user per month. I'm sorry about that. The business premium is about thirteen dollars. And the E3 plan is about $20 per user per month. So again, you can go to the Microsoft Teams website to, to learn more on the different packages that they have and the different features and functionalities that will differ from each of the plans. All right. But again, all four of, of the video conferencing that I mentioned, all of them have free plans. So you can explore them. You can do your trials with uh, all four of them. No commitments. Okay. Make sure that you work with your peers, with your different colleagues, different teachers, to make sure saan ba kayo mas comfortable? Itong functionality na ba na ito eh, kailangan natin as opposed to the different, uh, kunyari sa Zoom, mas kailangan ba natin yung Zoom compared to Microsoft Teams because of a certain functionality. So again, uh, I'm not forcing, I'm not force feeding you guys to, to use this or that. Okay, I'm not doing a hard sell. So make sure that you explore all options to make sure that the end goal of us is to basically do effective online teaching. All right. So these are the four that I introduced to you this morning. So hopefully after this, uh, after this uh, Facebook Live meeting and seminar, you, I urge you again to work with your schools. Okay. Ayan, sige. Let's do a one-minute check on, the, on our comments, no? Yan. So good morning from Rojas City Copies. Wow, very good. See, see Harvey. Okay, very interesting topic. Thank you. Is it possible to have video conferencing without internet connection? Unfortunately, hindi po pwede because kailangan po ng internet connection. Okay? Baka selfie lang po ang ginagawa niyo pag walang internet connection. <laughs> okay, sige po. Let's move on now to the learning management system. This is more in-depth now. No? All right, it's a learning management system. All right. So why LMS? Why learning management system? So basically, in a nutshell, no, learning management systems are software platforms for instructors and teachers to manage and organize educational courses online and provide students a single location for all course material. Okay. So what's good about the LMS, right, is you have access to training anytime and anywhere. So this means you have access both as the teacher and as the student, okay? Because uh, this is a whole system that you're, that you're gonna need to purchase. And fortunately, yung mga trial nito is very short, mga around seven days. And most of them are paid, okay? Because it's a whole system already that you need to use for your students uh, for, and for your curriculum. Another good thing for, uh, because LMS, it tracks reports, uh, sorry, tracks and reports the status of the learner. Okay, okay. So again, natatrack mo yung progress ng bata, okay, with the, with the LMS. Okay. It can also train large groups of people simultaneously. So again, uh, with the use of the LMS, what's good about it is you can have a certain lesson or a certain uh, uh, exercise na pwedeng multiple students na gagawa within the LMS. Okay? Ayan. Next, it also saves time and money. So, iisipin nyo na may bayad to, sir, di ba? Yes, may bayad. Pero at the end of the day, medyo because online teaching will probably be a new norm for the foreseeable future, um, hindi nyo na kailangan gumawa ng mga materials na na nasa kaptolina or nasa pad paper. So basically, everything's online. Okay? 
So it's very easy for you to check, which can save you time and you money for you to actually buy different materials with it. Okay? Because it's a web-based application, you can use it to plan, to implement, and to track your lear the learning content of your students okay? as teachers now. So again, uh, the training programs can be repeated, reducing costs. So in the event na, let's say, na next school year na, ala, anong ituturo ko? So the training program that you made last year or last month or last semester, you can repeat that. You can just do some minor tweaks on your curriculum or, or whatever. Tapos dun yung parin siya, makakustomize siya based on, what, on how you want it to. Okay? That's the power of LMS. All right? And within LMS, uh, testing and assessment tools are easy to use. So, jan yun nagagawin, pwede kayo jan gumuwa ng quiz, jan yun iche check, tapos mag automatic siya mag, uh, mag tabulate ng mga scores ng students. So, hindi mababawasan yung manual labor nyo in terms of checking ano bang average ni bata na to, pag in average mo yung test ba, pasado ba, or bagsak. So, it's very automated already. Okay? This one also, training is delivered on time every time. So because it's online, anybody and everybody can access the LMS, like your students. You can give, um, you can you can give some time deadlines on the students. So for example, you can only access this uh, lesson between uh, today and tomorrow, something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And at the same time, pwede rin sa mga exam nila. You can do an online exam na uh, an hour an hour time limit lang, okay? So that's LMS. Training is delivered, ay, bakit umulit yan? <laughs> Nagkamali ako, sorry. Okay, let's move on na lang. I don't know bakit umulit yan. Sige, all right. All right, I, I'll introduce to you the, the top 10 learning management systems as of 2020. This is based from g2.com. So they're one of the reviewers for this now. All right, so please raise your hand or just comment in the section kung familiar kayo in any of these 10. So Canvas, SAP Litmos, Blackboard, Google Classroom, Schoology, Lucebo, Talent LMS, Edmodo, Moodle, Absorb. Okay, anybody? Yes, that is LMS, is Google Classroom is a uh, type of LMS. Yes, kung sino man nagtanong nun, di ko na makakita. Alright. So, okay, personally, I have experience with uh, Edmodo and Moodle. So, again, ano siya? You can customize it. Moodle, I get some of my training materials from my film life here. Edmodo, I use this for some of the trainings that I use for food technology. Okay? Before pa. So, itong dalawa lang to ang may experience ako, to be honest. Because mostly of these, Ano to eh, mga paid versions to already. Okay. So again, work with your school to make sure kung ano yung kailangan yung LMS. If kailangan yun. Okay. Okay. So just to share with you the different LMS types. Alright. So this is your LMS, right? There are two types. Alright. So merong licensing type and the deployment type. Alright. So licensing type. Okay. You have a proprietary and open source software. Deployment type, you have on-premise and cloud-hosted. I will explain all of these later on. Okay, so yeah, let's move on. So for the licensing type, you have two. Okay, <clears throat> you have the proprietary LMS and the open source. So ano ba ang difference ng dalawa? So sa proprietary, for the license fee, because ang pinag-uusapan na natin dito is licensing, no? Because it's a whole different uh, platform already, na buong system na siya. So licenses na yung usapan Which means, na kung cost-based siya, meaning sa propri proprietary, per license validity period. So license to ng teachers, ng students, yun yung bibili niya. It's cost-based. Okay? Pwede nyo rin i-customize uh, uh, yung number of courses and per user siya. It's cost-based. Okay? Now, for the open source naman, there's no cost. It doesn't include any license fee. However, it comes with the price na. Okay? Time plus effort times people plus the hardware price. Bibili nyo na mismo yung hardware for this. Okay? 
right. Time and effort needed for implementation. Okay. If it's proprietary, it's fairly easy. Kasi kasama na siya dun sa license fee. Okay. So basically, you're just buying the licenses and it's set up for you already. Okay. Now, this one for the open source, it can require advanced technical skills and great cost. Because nga it's open source, ikaw mismo ang set up on your own. Okay. Kayo, uh, especially dun sa, baka mahirapan, especially yung mga schools na uh, walang IT uh, department. So baka mahirapan kayo on this portion. No? Okay. Next up. Okay, next up, client support, maintenance services. So for the proprietary, um, technical support within the service agreement. So again, Yung, kung, for example, Edmodo yung napili nyo. Si Edmodo ang tutulong sa inyo. Meron kayong parang hotline for that. Okay? Now, for the open source, uh, it requires additional cost for a dedicated team or a third-party support provider. So, hindi pa siya kasama dun sa package niya. Okay? Just, just showing you the difference. No? And lastly, the ease of customization. Again, for the proprietary, uh, customization is performed by the vendor's developers. Okay, so sasa you will work closely with the developers of the the LMS. Sasabihin nyo kung anong customization ang gusto nyo. Sila nagagawa. Okay. On the other hand, for the open source, all projects may be implemented, basically depending on the architecture of your LMS. So again, kayo gagawa nito, which might be uh, difficult for you, especially if you don't have an IT. Okay, so that's that's the two different licensing types, proprietary and open source. Okay, and these are the differences for, for both. Okay, now we can move on to the, oops, what happened? All right, we can move on to the deployment type. All right, so the two deployment types, as I mentioned earlier, are on-premise and hosted. So basically on-premise, nandun siya sa school nyo. Yung mismong physical hardware nandun sa school nyo. Kung hosted siya, Pwedeng nasa ibang site, tapos ko connect lang yung school nyo dun sa site na yun. Then you can access your LMS. It's basically like that. Okay? So again, on-premise, yung mismong hardware mo, yung mismong computer or, or mga drives mo for that is within the premise. It's on-premise within the school. So pwede nyo siyang ma-check, etc. If hosted, it's, it's basically off-site. Okay? So yeah, it's for re website for LMS. So this includes the do domain, the hosting, the support, the storage. Okay? So because it's on-premise, kailangan required siya. Nandun siya sa, ano nyo eh, sa school nyo. Okay? But if it's hosted, if it's in, in the other side, may install lang siya dun sa domain ng vendor. So no problem. Alright? Parang naka-cloud siya. Alright? Alright. For on-premise, a dedicated internal team, is it required? Of course, it is. Siyempre, sino mag-check ng, ano ng capacity mo and availability ng, ng system mo if wala kayong internal team. All right? Now, if it's hosted, again, it's off-site, yung mismong vendor's team na mag-handle ng activities and they will just report to you. Okay? So, sila na, sila na mag-check ng availability. Hala, up pa yung system natin? How many users ba? Sumobra ba tayo sa licensing, sa users, etc.? So they will be the ones to report that. Okay. Okay, IT support costs. Pag on-premise, of course, high because bibili pa kayo ng physical, uh, physical uh, equipment nyo. Okay, yung mga PC nyo, the hard drives, etc. Okay. This one is low because you're just going to connect if it's hosted. Okay. You're just going to connect to the vendor. Then you can access your, your, your files already, your LMS. All right, hardware and software cost, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, for on-premise, of course, it's high, especially in the case of a standalone setup. Meaning, it's a setup talaga within your premise, you miss mong LMS yung doon lahat babato na ng information, etc. Okay, if it's hosted, it's of course it's low because ang binabayaran yun na lang here will be subscription fees. You let the vendor manage the system for you. Okay. You simply purchase your subscription and migrate your data. Okay? But again, there are pros and cons here. There are siguro magtatanong na paano yung security niyan, sir. Sige, we, uh, we will go on to that the next one. Okay? 
Maintenance and upgrade cost, of course, high sa on-premise. Kasi kung may nasira kayong physical equipment, bibili kayo. Okay? Pag-hosted, of course, much lower. Kasi co-connect lang kayo. Eh. You don't need any physical equipment for this. Or very minimal at, at, at the very least. Okay? Ayan. Sa customizability, if it's on-premise, uh, the LMS platform allow for complete customization, including the different modules, the different engines, and the customizations. Okay? However, for the hosted, uh, cloud-based LMS will come as a package deal. Okay? So those are the two differences in terms of custom. Ito, the last one, hinuli ko talaga yung security. So for on-premise, because again, it's inside your school, system security is usually guaranteed by the supplier company, which means kayo rin, as the school, siguro nasa server room nyo yung, ano, yung system nyo na merong kasamang security na yan. Okay. However, pag nasa hosted na siya, the organization, meaning kayo, the school, must take measures to protect all data in the hosted LMS because your data is in the vendor's site. Okay? In the event na yung site ng vendor ma-hack or ma-compromise, patay yung data nyo. So you have to work out with the vendor kung may backup ba yan, ano ba yung mga security measures, meron bang degaussing, etc. Et okay? So those are the two different deployment types. So again, the on-premise and the hosted. Okay. So again, I think the question that everybody's uh, that's in everybody's minds, no. So what LMS will suit you best? Okay. So when you enter the market of learning management systems, it's critical to compare and contrast all the options and services features available. Okay. So consider these five when you're trying to decide on which LMS you're trying to, to purchase and trying to use. Okay. So the administration, okay. So this 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 includes your content management system, your CRM, your API, and different notifications. Okay. Learning analytics number two, okay. This, this includes your assessment tracking, student tracking, automated report creations, etc. Okay. For your authoring tools, number three, dito na papasok yung mga audio video conferencing, uh, audio video conferencing tools that will integrate to your LMS. Okay, your grading functionalities will come here also. So authoring tools, as well as the different chat tools, the social and collaboration technologies. Dito yan papasok sa authoring tools. So you have to consider that as well. All right. Number four, customization, of course. Not all schools are the same. Iba-ibang curriculum, iba-ibang tinuturuan, iba-ibang techniques. So dito napapasok yung customization niya. Okay, so that, that includes the different branding, the reporting, the functionalities, different certificates that you need to, to use for that. And lastly, the integrations. No? So integrations include uh, the social learning, e-commerce, hybrid learning, blended learning, all of those. So again, I urge you guys to do your own research on what best what is best suited for your students and your uh, program okay <coughs> excuse me all right nako bumaba ang viewers natin 14k na lang tayo but from miss ann thank you for sharing your experiences topic is very informative sir thank you hashtag i love teach make sure you you use the hashtag i love teach Okay, make sure you like and follow the Abiva page. All right. So, I guess we'll move on now with the different tips and tricks. No? So, as teachers, siguro naghahanap kayo ng ways on how, paano ba namin to best ma ko communicate sa students namin? Sir, okay, so yeah, let's move on to your tip, tips and tricks. Okay. So, again, uh, Effective teaching online. The first one is make it a group effort. Okay? As a teacher, hindi ka masyado familiar sa technology or bago ka pa lang dito sa new normal of online teaching, make sure that you either pair up or group together because brainstorming on this can, can, can actually help you. Eh. Ano ba yung best way to communicate this specific subject to the student? So, for example, uh, again, my mom is a teacher. So yung department niya can group together or pair up para meron kayong sounding board. 
what's the best idea to communicate this specific topic, etc. Okay, to make it a group effort. It also go. It also applies to the students as well, you know, because yung student nga nakaupo lang sa bahay. Why not make it a group effort from their end as well? So make it a point na let's say may isang assignment, may isang exercise na na papagawa kayo sa student. As opposed to a single student who will do it, make it a pair or a group para meron pa rin silang interaction within the video conferencing, within the LMS. Okay? That will make it more interesting and mas, mas maingan nyo yung bata, yung student. Okay? All right. Next one. Focus on active learning. So engage students with spurts of discussions, collaboration, video, audio clips, and hands-on exercises. Diba sa online na nakita nyo lang yung screen? So you have to make sure that you mix it up. Hindi lahat binabasa lang ng studyante. Make sure na after maybe two or three slides, merong parang video. Or after another two to three slides, merong exercise. Another two to three slides, merong audio clips na papakinggan. So make sure to mix it up para maging interesting not only for you as the teacher, but also for the students. Hindi siya mabubor. Diba? Meron niya akong, again, magkakwento yung mom ko, may isang student na nakatulog na, yung ganun. So, make sure that you make it interesting for, for the students as well. Kasi, the new normal doesn't apply only for the teachers, but for the students as well. Okay? So, again, it's a team effort within the teacher and student to make sure feedback goes both ways. Okay? Next one. Chunk the lessons. Alright. So, no pages of text or an hour-long video. So, make sure uh, make sure that you break up the text with photographs as well. So again, ayaw ng bata na lahat binabasa lang nila. So make sure na yung uh, subject content mo will be short and con but concise. Okay? Kasi again, the attention span sa laptop, sa computer, sa smartphone will be, will be very short. So make sure you mix mix and match mo yan. Okay? Huwag naman yung hour-long video, makakatulog yung bata. Hour-long video about World War II. Mga uh, ganun, di ba? Mahirapan sila. Alright. Keep group sizes small. So, the recommended uh, cap of students is about 20 to 30. So, again, why is this? Uh, again, ano siya? Uh, it's all about maintaining the, the attention span of everybody. And at the same time, from a teacher's perspective, even if you have an assistant, you can't look at everybody all at the same time. That's a video conferencing. So, make sure it's a manageable number. Okay? It's about 20 to 30. Okay? Some of some that I know maabot pa nga ng 40, which is kung manageable naman on their end, that's fine. No problem. Kasi kung 100 na yan, diba? kasi yung assistant mo yung chumicheck, tulog na ba si ganito, nakikinig ba si ganyan, may hirapan na kayo. So make sure may CAPTCHA based on what works for you. Okay? Again, be present. All right? Be mentally present no matter where the teaching and learning takes place. So again, I know it's difficult because it's virtual learning and it's through video conferencing lang. But as teachers, make sure that you are fully engaged dun sa, dun sa topics nyo. No? Don't, uh, ipakita nyo sa students na kahit mahirap to, we are working together to make sure na ma-communicate namin sa inyo yung mga lessons as best as you, uh, as you can. Okay? Huwag nyo ipapakita na ano, na nahihirapan kayo dun sa technology kasi syempre, masisense nila yan. So make sure you do your your uh, mga trial, trial teacher to teacher muna based sa connection nyo, based on how loud your voice is kasi ma-feel yan ng bata. And if ma-feel ng bata or ng student na ay hindi alam ni miss, hindi alam ni sir yung sinasabi niya or mahina, mawawala ng interest yung bata. So make sure that you are present in all of those. Alright? And at the same time, Parse your time. Manage your time in a reasonable way. Don't be available 24 by 7. So may mga tendency yung mga bata na because it's online, they can message you anytime in a day. 8 p.m. Ma'am, ano po ba yung sinabi nyo sa kaninang morning about the assignment, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So make sure as the teachers, you manage your time properly also in, in, in a sense na consultation hours will be between 1 to 3 only. Anything outside that is uh, we can do it Offline, uh, sorry, we can do it na tomorrow. Something like that. Okay? So, kayo as teachers, you might be tempted na, sige, you can contact me anytime. Uh, I, I don't think that's a good idea because even if this is virtual learning, you also need to balance uh, work life. Kumbaga, work life balance pa rin. Okay? 
So make it a point na may limit pa rin yung students. And at the same time, kayo rin. Baka naman nag email kayo sa student ng 8 p.m. and expect them to reply, di ba? So make sure na it's within the time frame pa rin of what you're trying to do. Alright? So those are some of the effective teaching uh, tips and tricks that I can share with you. Okay? And just to recap, <clears throat> okay, again, kanina ko pa sinasabi, work with your school and colleagues to find the best solution, okay? So discuss amongst your peers on what the best approach is to tackle this new normal of online teaching. Do your own research and make sure to involve your IT team, if possible, to ensure the usability of your video conferencing as well as your LMS, okay? Now, there are other things na pwede nyo gawin. Yung LMS is just an option, no? So, Microsoft PowerPoint, yan pa rin ang ginagamit ng mga teachers ngayon. You can just share your screen with that. So, I'm not telling you to buy an LMS, okay? I'm just introducing you to the concept just in case your school and your curriculum requires it, okay? But some of, again, some of the, the, some of the teachers that I know, they still use uh, PowerPoint. In Word, pa rin, they just share the screen so they can still use that as well as the different Google applications, Google Docs, Google Sheets, etc. Okay, so you can still do that. It, it depends also on the teacher how you're gonna communicate it. You don't really need uh, a big expensive LMS for this, naman anyway. So, again, work with your school and your colleagues, your peers, work with the parents as well, work with your students on how you can best do this ping pong of information virtually, okay? So I think that's it for me. We can go to Q&A already, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll give you maybe about five minutes for a q and A. I'll I'll try to answer as much as I can kasi medyo lagpas na rin ako sa time. So siguro mga two minutes of questions na lang. And then everything we can probably do offline. You can contact your representative in, a, in Abiba, all right? for any, any questions or additional trainings that you might need. So please make sure that you like and follow the Abiva Publishing House page and contact your representative there in, in the event that you need additional training for all of this, okay? Yeah, and sige. Okay, basahin natin mga comments. Embracing the new normal, correct. Thank you, Sir Randy, you're welcome. I, I re I'm really passionate about this, I don't know, this, this topic because I can, again, my mom's a teacher and I can sense the, the difficulty from her side na uh, ano siya, nahihirapan sa technology, nahihirapan na virtual lang. But that's not an excuse for the teacher's passion to not be there, eh, di ba? It's just a hurdle. It's just a barrier that you need to, you need to get through, okay? So the, the good thing is we have trainings like this to make sure that it will be easier for all of you guys, okay? So, okay, meron na bang question? Very practical, having online classroom rules still, still needed. I agree with you, ma'am. Ma'am Lindy, okay? Thank you for a very fruitful orientation. Thank you po. Okay, interesting topic. Okay, let's wait for the Q&A. No? Medyo nalilate yan eh. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Sige, uh, I'll move on to this. No? So, uh, while we wait for the questions, I want to thank everybody for joining the, the training today. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming to this training. No? Uh, hopefully, marami kayo natutunan. Uh, if, again, as I mentioned, if you have any questions for any further trainings, please contact your Abiva Publishing House representative. You can also email me straight or you can email leadingwithsuccess at gmail.com. Okay, that's, that's the training company that I'm part of. All right, so yeah, let's wait another two minutes before we end this uh, FB Live, just in case there are questions. Okay, but again, please make sure to like and follow the Abiva Publishing House page. Uh, I want to thank uh, especially Ms. Cora, Ms. JV, and Ms. Ida from Abiva from give, for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge on this. Hopefully, nakatulong sa inyo and... Uh, Yes, let's embrace the new normal for online teaching. I know it's difficult, but as long as we work together with the parents, with the students, with your school, uh, we can bridge that gap already, okay? So yeah, wala pa rin question. 
Okay, what can you say about Zoom bombing? Will there be a possibility that this will happen to me? Yes. Okay, yung Zoom bombing basically yung sumasali yung different person sa Zoom meeting mo. Okay? So I think uh, Zoom is aware of this and I think they have made uh, mitigation uh, actions already on this to make sure that the security of your meeting is not impeded. Okay? Kaya sila nagpapasok na ng mga uh, mga passwords for all of the meetings. Okay? Kasi before walang passwords, pasok ka lang eh. Pula ka lang ng Zoom ID, nakakapasok ka na. So there, I hope that answers your question, madam. Okay, what else? No other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you rin po. Thank you, Abiva. Yes. Pasalamat po tayo sa Abiva for providing this seminar. No? Hopefully, nakatulong sa inyo. All right. Sige. Okay, I think that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, let's embrace the new normal for online teaching. Good luck and God bless. Thank you, Paul.